Hello everyone, in this video here we'll be doing a demonstration how to create a wireless uh, intruder alert system using motion sensors. Now this particular system here I do have is two motion sensors but you can do this on a single uh, motion sensor system. Now this whole system can be built for around um, I would say probably between about $65 or $70. Now some of these parts I did have uh, kicking around at home which I was able to use so I did save a little bit of money on the long run there. Uh, the sensors here I believe are about $20 a piece and I believe the uh, wireless doorbell was roughly also about the same value so those would be the most expensive parts you are looking at. Um, these can uh, replace a camera system although they can't uh, can't actually videotape what's going on they do kind of give an alarm at home uh, basically for installation where you can use this here maybe you want to use it at the entrance of the driveway uh, if you want to see if someone is pulling up your driveway if you do have a fairly long one uh, say maybe you want to protect your driveway at night maybe you've had break-ins before you want to be alerted or something like that or maybe uh, just locations around the house somewhere um, it's always good to have something like this just a little extra security uh, it's very mobile around the house um, and uh, doesn't take up much space either just to talk about the sensor a little bit here uh, basically with this sensor here it does have a day or nighttime sensor so it does operate during the night and on the daytime it will shut off. Now this does depend on the uh, maker model you get. It might come with this option, it might not. Now as for the range here you can set on how far the distance is. Now this particular sensor here does go up to 70 feet and it does also have a 180 degree view here and it can be set up as a maximum of 8 feet high and still pick up everything on the ground. Now this does depend on the maker model of what this range will be. Now it also does have a timer itself too. Now this is set up on test here because it is the lowest duration here. So basically I believe it's uh, 30 seconds it'll go for uh, around that range here. Uh, it'll keep doing the test. So in other words, it'll stay the circuit on for 30 seconds until it resets itself and the chime will go off again. Or you can set it up to one minute, five minutes, and 10 minutes. Basically the longer you set it up for, uh, the longer, if you did have a light hooked up to this, the longer the light will stay on. Now the items you'll need to uh, make this system here is a wireless doorbell alarm. Basically what we have here is we have the chime box which does make the sound which is normally located inside the house somewhere. Um, you can see here is the wireless uh, the push button uh, which is located on the exterior of your house. Uh, we'll also need a mechanical relay here which I'll show you in a minute just hidden inside there as well as a waterproof box uh, if you are making this uh, system used for the outside and you'll need the uh, motion sensors themselves. Now these motion sensors are basically the same type which are found on the exterior lights. Uh, basically the ones you walk by it does sense uh, some movement and then stays on for a duration of time and the light shuts off after. Now this particular system here it does use two motion sensors but you can uh, wire it in so it does just have one. And you'll also need some MARAC connectors as well as an extension cord because we are hooking this system up to uh, a 120 uh, house voltage. Now starting with the box first and mounting the sensors. Now considering I do have two sensors, I had to drill two holes in the box itself and also another hole for the cord here. Now depending on the box you do purchase, uh, some do come pre-drilled, others don't. So it depends what style you're after, I just wanted a clean style here. Some do have a few different sizes on the outside here and it can be, if we just want a smoother design on it, just a, just a personal preference basically. Now as for the sensors itself, now I purchased these, you can buy these individually or sometimes you can buy them with an actual light assembly themselves. Uh, these ones were purchased from Lowe's, but uh, there's other retailers that do carry these uh, sensors. Now you will have to uh, look at the wiring diagram. It does come with the sensors themselves. Basically, these ones here operate on three wires. You'll have a common wire coming in, uh, then a uh, power wire, and you'll also have a power switching wire on these sensors. Now, with the cord coming in, we just basically have two wires here, a power wire, which is the black, and then a common wire, which basically serves uh, similar to just a ground, um, which is the white wire itself. Now, starting with the uh, common wire here, basically what we have here is have the two wires coming from the sensors themselves. Now, if you do have one sensor, there will just be one simple wire here. Now, these are... Uh, connected all the way right from the extension cord goes up to this Marek connector along with these two wires here they go up to the Marek connector and we have another wire coming all the way down which goes to the coil side of the relay itself and I'll just give a little more of an explanation about the relay itself in uh, just a quick minute here uh, next for the power wire here basically what we have here is the power wire coming in from the uh, power cord 
goes up the MARA connector and we have them connected directly to the to the sensors itself. Now this uh, whole system is hooked up in a, a parallel uh, style circuit. So the knees connect right here directly and that's for that. Now next for the switching wires themselves, the switching wires are the red wires here coming from the sensors and basically what these do is these just are a power signal which go directly to the relay itself on the coil side. So uh, just to go over this again, on the coil side of the relay we do have the power switching wires as well as the common wire which comes in. Now the purpose of the relay here basically is what it does is it uh, converts um, higher voltage which we do have is 120 volts coming into the system here and we'll be running on a low voltage system which the wireless remote does run off itself. Now basically the wire remote, wireless remote is on the switching side of the relay itself. So once this is powered up, say when somebody walks across the field of view of the sensor here, it'll send a power signal all the way to the relay, which in turn powers up the coil on the inside. Basically this is an electromagnetic coil and it does close the contacts then. And what happens here is when it closes the contacts, we have uh, the soldered wires here, which I'll show you in a minute, which is a open circuit. Basically this bypasses it, closes the circuit with the two contacts here, so it works exactly like the switch on the front side here, and then which in turn does send the signal all the way to the uh, wireless uh, chime system. Now as for the relay itself, and this particular relay is a mechanical relay here, uh, this is what I prefer to use for the system here. So I'm just going to show you how the test works here. Now we do have the uh, wireless uh, switch for the bell itself, and here's the bell device. So basically when I depress the button here, you can hear it does make a chime noise at this here. So when I do touch the wires here just to ensure it is connected at the switch itself. Now these wires will be hooked up to the relay after which I'll show you just in a minute. And you can see it still does work and does uh, close the um, open circuit within the uh, switching device itself and then therefore uh, turns on the chime sound. Now as you can see here when the circuit board is removed uh, just from the casing itself here from the uh, wireless uh, doorbell switch. You can see this plastic piece here just basically pops out of the casing itself and then you have direct access to the circuit board. You can remove it. Now basically what we have here, we have two switches on the board here. One on the bottom, one on the center here. The one on the center is the switching for the doorbell to activate the sound. The one on the bottom here just to change the tone of the sound. So basically moving around to the back side here, this is a, a four pin style switch. Now now this does depend on your make and model. Sometimes they might have just have a regular two pin. Uh, without looking at a di wiring diagram on this specific uh, remote itself, uh, I'm not exactly sure why there is four of these, possibly just for a safety feature. Uh, maybe it does activate some other option, I'm not exactly sure. But in order to check out when they uh, do connect with the triggering devices for this stuff here, Basically what you want to do is you want to depress the button itself and then using a, uh, a multimeter you want to check uh, to ensure there is a connection in between uh, two of these four wires. Now basically on this one here there's just a crisscross pattern so this one is connected here and here and this other side is connected there and there. Then with the other side of the wire here, basically what we'll be hooking up the, to is the relay itself. So this just bypasses the actual switch and almost uh, almost like a double switch setup I'd, uh, would be the best way to describe it. Now as for the position of this, now you can set this one up here as I mentioned earlier uh, of a distance of 8 feet high and it'll pick up up to 70 feet uh, if there's any movements around. And you also want to make sure you do have the sensors positioned in such a way here because it does say this side up here. If you do have it facing the other way, the way it's designed here, it actually won't pick up uh, the movement and the way it's supposed to and the way the field of view is for these sensors themselves. Now this obviously does also depend on the uh, maker model of the sensors you do purchase. So once you've wired everything together, uh, basically you have a final product that looks like this. Now this is already plugged in. It does take a second depending on this, what type of sensor you have. It does take a second for it to um, uh, just basically reset or calibrate itself. And uh, you can normally hear the relay inside click, um, which means it either is activated or uh, not activated. When you first plug it in, it will click. Then you wait a second. Uh, once the sensors itself is calibrated, it will click again, which means it's uh, deactivated. So basically just a test here to show you how it works. I'll move my hand in front of the one sensor here and you can hear the uh, chime go off.
And again, we'll try the other sensor. And you can hear the relay does uh, basically disengage and then it's ready again for something to walk by in the field of view for the sensors itself. Now this concludes the rest of my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them below. Also, please subscribe to my channel for further tutorial tutorial videos as well as rate this video. Thank you for watching.